Welcome to another episode of Caps and Cards. I'm your host, Buddy J18, and I am joined today by uh, EJ North Ruffitted here, and uh, we're going to talk about the AFC and NFC Championship game. I was a show off couple of uh, hats I got, a couple of hats I got, and a jersey I picked up, a Bengals jersey. John wanted to show off some Noble North stuff. I was a show off one of the, my card pickups for a possible rookie of the year in the NFL. I'll let uh, John lead off. Well, I uh, switched my combo wombo. Well, here's what I was wearing today. It was the uh, Timberwolf. And uh, we got our, and I'll have it on for a little bit here during the video. We got the. Uh, yeah, Sasquatch. Which, uh, oh, backwards. So. Yeah, should be landing on uh, the back of Tribune in my house tomorrow. I can't wait for that one. And a uh, surprise NHL pickup. Yeah. So uh, I'll probably wear that a little bit here too. So uh, TJ, get us going. Combo Wombo, I got uh, the Bengals. Salute service from this year. I like the way this orange popped off the black. Which way do you pick it up? And mm -hmm. uh, I got the uh, Mitchell and Ness USA run. Uh, it's probably mid 2000s. Uh, Boomer Esiason jersey. The last time the Bengals were good. The only one other one I would want from this era is probably Icky Woods. I want to see Joe Mixon in the Super Bowl do the Icky Shuffle. <laughs> he scores his first touchdown. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, so, uh, the early game today, halftime, it's 21 3 Chiefs. I have four game props open. I, I took the Chiefs to win in like three out of four props. And but I had one where it was like Bengals win in like some crazy fashion. And that's the one that wins. It wasn't a huge payout though, but it was still fun. It was definitely a real exciting game to watch just as a fan, too. Seeing them come back like that. The Chiefs offense went so stagnant. Imagine Burrow next year when they have an offensive line. Yeah, like he looked like he was uh, shuffling they, out there pretty good. They're going to have uh, some contract. They're going to have some cap space too next year. They're one of the teams with cap space, so they can sign some premium free agent at left tackle and draft a right tackle in the first round next year and uh, be pretty well off. So I think you're going to start seeing – I think you're going to start seeing like a New England effect where all these guys are going to want to go to Cincy to win just because he has that intangible – thing for LSU he, he, he's like he, people are drawn to it's hard to explain it's like the wonderlet kind of thing like they uh, want I still think uh that that's gonna be very uh superlative to if another receiver comes by if they can get a line to come in uh obviously luck was definitely on their side because uh hey look the the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl and uh not the fucking Chiefs so woo <laughs> uh I want to take something everybody called uh, the Bengals GM an idiot for uh taking uh Jamar Chase fifth overall over uh Penny's tool when their biggest thing was the offensive line but they had that connection in college and he's been the best pick out of that draft in my opinion out of every team he's probably going to win rookie of the year uh, Jamar Chase, uh, easily, he was the MVP for them in that game, other than their kicker. I couldn't have picked uh, a better connection throughout the game. I picked Burrow to Chase for 1.5 touchdowns, but that didn't pan. Uh, we're also uh, thinking about doing a new segment here uh, called Spidey Bets. You know, because it's legal in my state, but uh, if uh, we can get a promo code or something for the show, that'd be funny too. Uh, I so far I've basically been playing with house money. All my bets have been, for the most part, pretty spot on with the actual game scores. And uh, when we get to the later the NFC game here, uh, do you have? Uh, an NFC combo you would like to? Uh... Uh, I have Niners stuff. And they lost. I don't have. I don't have a Rams jersey. That's the fair. Only Rams, the only Rams jersey I'm hunting after is uh, 
probably uh, Jack Youngblood. And that's like the early 2000s, this era. They're kind of hard to find. But when you do find them, they fit big, so you can go size down. Like, uh, I can rock probably 48 and 52 in the early 2000s stuff. Like that Jerry Rice I have, that's a tarp. Is from that era. They cut them big. This is big, too, for a 52. Okay. They just made them bigger back then because everybody was wearing the throwbacks, like, oversized. They made them longer. Other problem, because it goes below my knees. Wow. Don't worry, all the recycle, so uh, eventually all these oversized throwbacks will come right back. <laughs> I mean, if you were a little taller, it wouldn't be so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, so the two props on the NFC game I had were Debo Samuel to have 40 rushing yards and Odell Beckham to have 40 receiving yards. And that was a $12 bet would have paid $42. That one, I was 14 rushing yards short for Debo Samuel. My second one, which paid $120 on a $20 bet, was Cooper Cup, one touchdown, Debo Samuel, one touchdown, and Matthew Stafford for 250 passing yards. I had plus 500 odds because it was not supposed to happen, and uh, I won that. So I won 100 bucks on a $20 bet today, so I'll take it. So Spidey bets here. We won 100 bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty fun with sports side betting being an actual thing now. It kind of gives you another angle look at games, especially some of the uh crappy matchups in the NFL, like Thursday night football, for example, is usually a pretty crappy matchup. But if you put five bucks or ten bucks on the game for something crazy to happen, you watch it and it happens, it's kind of fun. Makes uh, some of the ball a little bit more watchable. It certainly made the uh single game parlays a lot more exciting. Because then you could, uh, if you saw that Stafford to cup for one or two touchdowns, it was plus 600 on a $5 bet was close to a $200 payout or some shit. So, I mean, if you want to pay five bucks and maybe hit big, you know, it, it's out there. Obviously, they're not tailored for you to win. Plus 500 odds are extremely not in your favor. The, the minus numbers are the ones where they're in your favor. Yeah, so uh, pretty interesting. Do you know Joe Burrow is the uh, only first overall pick to make the Super Bowl in his first two seasons? It's Whoa. pretty telling. It's going to be the uh, Super Bowl of uh, first overall picks because Stafford was the first overall pick in 08. 08. And he, he went 0-16 as rookie. I'm going to have to fact check Stafford uh, draft year. I think it was 2008. And then they went, that's the year they went 0 and 16 was his rookie season. Yeah. The uh, first overall 2009 NFL draft. So 09, 10 season. <clears throat> Still terrible. That's a long time to suck. <laughs> it, it, it has, it's that Lions organization, man. I like what Dan Campbell's doing now, but up until then, it was just a carousel head coach, and they wasted so many good guys' careers. Like, imagine Calvin Johnson if he was on an actually good team. Calvin Johnson and Peyton Manning in that era, or even early Brady, and we trade for him somehow. Uh, that's going to take a lot of assets that the Lions never had. <laughs> uh in it's other... just like ben. Same thing with uh, Barry Sanders. Here's my uh, other pickup from eBay. It's uh, Musa, old school, new era, uh, NHL with the Devils logo. Mm -hmm. It's a little tight. I can do a little work on it. Still a cool cap, cool logo. Any NHL on my size that I like, I tend to grab just because you can't get them because the new era licensing and whatnot. Most stores don't have them, like the Bruins, for example. Yeah. So uh, in other news, is Brady actually done or was Belichick just making a phone call and retiring for him? <laughs> I think he's done. I think he's going to get that corny like one day contract. 
He's going to come back here, and then everybody's going to celebrate him. It's going to be really funny because the Buccaneers, their fan base is going to go from this to, like, nothing. Imagine you're the guy who sold the uh, – who got who gave the football back. He gave a million-dollar football away, let's say. You got a, a signed Brady jersey that's not game-worn. You got a Mike Evans signed jersey that was game-worn. And season tickets for a couple of years and $1,200 at the pro shop. And they're going to suck next year. Uh, <laughs> they well, have no quarterback. Well, they're going to need the next uh, Josh Allen or Justin Herbert or – Whoever's out there. I think they're going to go after that. I think they're going to be in the Rodgers running just to try to still win now because unless they don't sign everybody back because they led a letter to Fournette and a couple other guys were on one-year deals, so they're going, they're going too. I wouldn't be surprised if by training camp you see Arians retiring. Sean Payton retired because the Caps have negative $70 million in uh, cap space next year. He just was like, nope. How do you even get that? That uh, doesn't even make sense. It's because the cap space went down and the contracts they were they had were backloaded. Because they were trying to win now with Drew Brees. Mm-hmm. They overpaid Kamara. They overpaid uh, Marcus Lattimore, who's infamous for the uh, Minneapolis miracle where he tackled his own teammate by accident by missing uh, the uh, guy that's on your team on the Bills. Uh, Diggs. Stephon Diggs for a walk-off touchdown and uh, Case Keenum, who's no longer in Minnesota either, who's now a Brown, I think, still. Oh, it was the the it was like the Drake video where he was like doing one of those. <laughs> it was just pretty funny to think about like how, how these plays turn out and then these players go certain places. <laughs> I just think the Bengals are gonna be a real force in the NFC in the uh, AFC this in the future. The NFL future is pretty bright. These guys might be retiring, but we still have uh, lots of young, good football players. Like, it, will Justin Herbert ever win anything? Or is he going to be the next Phillip Rivers? Is if Joey Burrow wins the Super Bowl, do the Bengals come on to be a dynasty? Possibly. Does Josh Allen take that next step and go from being a great regular season quarterback to making that jump in the NFL and trying to get over the hump? There's so many good stories. Well, now that we saw the Bengals do it, I think anything is possible. And they haven't done good since 1988. That fan base, the only the last time the Cincinnati won anything was in 1990, 30 plus years ago, it was the Reds. Last World Series. Big red machine. Well, no, that was uh, the Red, uh, Roy Dibble and uh, Barry Larkin. And the nasty boys, they call them, because uh, Roy Dibble would throw it in your head. Old school. Yeah. I wouldn't fly. Chin music, it's called. <laughs> well, that's what Pete Rose was saying. Uh, if you ever, I, I watched a lot of the podcasts that Pete Rose does with like Dirk Eyes and show and stuff like that. He's like, yeah, back in my day, if we were doing what they were doing, swinging away and stuff like that, we would get some chin music right down next to the head. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, they're, just, they're just trying to hurt you. Yeah, they're like the character in Major League that the. He's the closer for uh, the Yankees in the movie. He, that's who he's supposed to be, I believe. He, he's just like he's got that thick handlebar mustache, but he comes out looking like that, uh, that 1988 or 90 uh, Reds guy. So, I mean, it, it reminds me of like a Mariano Rivera, but it, it's a little soon for Rivera for the Major League movie to have that reference. Yeah, it wouldn't be Rivera. It'd probably be Raleigh Fingers they're referencing. A couple different guys. But it's still a funny... Uh, yeah, funny little snippet. Because it's, it's gonna be true. A, it's going to be a real exciting Super Bowl with the Rams hosting the Super Bowl in their stadium, if it's still played in L.A., which who knows, because the city of Los Angeles could change the rules and it could, it could get transferred to Arlington. And I don't think they will now, because the Rams are hosting it. Well, it's it's funny because uh, the the major league closer, the guy almost looks just like a little smidge like Clemens, and when uh, Euchre is announcing him, he goes, he threw it his kid in a college uh, game where it was about uh, past graduates alumni game, 
and Clemens actually threw at his own kid in an alumni game because he hit a home run on him and he threw him some tune music. <laughs> Speaking of other guys that are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, the, huh? the single season home run leader. Single season and all time home run fraud. I said. <laughs> I still think he would have done it even even without the steroids. Uh, I still Uh-oh. think he would have been Uh-oh. a great home run hitter. In my opinion, I still think Hank Aaron is the true home run king. And the other cool thing about Hank Aaron, you can take all his home runs away. He still has 3,000 hits. He wasn't just a uh, – at one point, Bonds Gray he just hit home runs. He didn't really – didn't get on base a whole lot on the walk-in or home run. You could take away every goal Gretzky ever scored, and he'd still have 10 points per game. <laughs> Well, that's because he was with uh, Messier and um, and all those guys. He was an assist machine, too. That's like Ovi. Ovi's crazy with all those stats, too. Uh, it was Ziggy Palfi, and uh, I recognize one of the Sabres uh, in one of the videos I was watching. What? Just crazy. Assist machine. Gretzky's office. That's why they call that the office. Well, yeah, he the Ovechkin stands pretty much in the same place on the power play, and half the time uh, now they leave it open. The office is not the power play. The office is considered that area behind the net that they have lined off. What was it? No, but it was still pretty cool uh, seeing all this stuff going down. It's going to be real different with all these players retiring. It's kind of weird seeing all the guys you watch as a kid slowly, slowly leave the league. I was having a discussion with somebody after the Chiefs game, and they were telling me how, uh, you know, they were giving me the the Bills chin music and all that shit. And I was like, bro, I I wasn't even alive. Like, you can't hit me with shit. I don't like I haven't actually like, yeah, I've seen Netflix specials. Everybody's going to talk about it. Yeah, you you can't avoid it when you go to the stadium. And it says 91 AFC champs, 92 AFC champs, 93, 94. But to hit somebody with that after you know your team loses the the AFC championship game, tell me you're not the one who's fucking mad right now. So uh a shout out to all those Chiefs fans that were giving me all that shit a week ago. You got what was coming to you. <laughs> At least we won't see uh Jackson Mahomes and his and his girl and his uh wife For me. Yeah. Fans. Oh, I'm so glad. I am so glad, but at the same time, I I did find it entertaining. I don't know both of them. I can't stand either of them. I think I solely think Patrick Mahomes scores what tries to win, just so he can stay away from them. <laughs> Extend his work schedule. Patrick Mahomes extends his work schedule so he doesn't have to go home and and have a long off season. I truly <laughs> believe that. If Mahomes played hockey and he was out in April, I think he would be the most miserable man on the face of the earth. <laughs> or like, or, or or if he stayed in baseball with no October, I mean, it, that's quite the off season up to April if he's not a pitcher. <laughs> oh, so uh, Sabres uh, lost tonight uh extending the colorado avalanche win streak to 18 games the longest win streak and i'm not just talking home games because somebody tried to hit me with some oh well the red the red wings have have won 23 straight uh home games and i go yeah so when they went on the road and lost you still count that as a win streak no you're fucking stupid it's not a point streak either point streaks don't count I'm talking about good one games, and that hasn't been broken since 92-93 Pittsburgh Penguins, and they won the Stanley Cup, so I'm thinking I'm calling it right now, is that the Colorado Avalanche are going to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, I think there's a few other teams that are in the running. You've got to always consider the Lightning. Then you've got to also consider Sidney Crosby has been playing pretty good in 91-92. 90, 91, 92, and 92, 93. 
back-to-back Stanley Cup champs. And it took until 17, 18, 18, 19, I think, for the Pens to do it again with Matt Murray. And then they absolutely abandoned him. And now he's playing for Ottawa, and he just doesn't look the same. Uh, I know his father passed away pretty recently, so obviously he's not the same goaltender he once was. But Honestly, yeah. On the bright note, on a brighter note, the uh, Flyers finally ended their losing streak. <laughs> it's a bad time for Philly sports, my friend. Well, I, I I always thought it was a good joke that uh, Pittsburgh had the the winning streak and the losing streak at eighteen games, so. Uh, you know, didn't they? No, no, we we almost got there. We beat Philly to break that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all in good fun, though. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. To see what happens with uh, everything, hockey and everything like that. I think the Wild are another team that's sneaky for the Stanley Cup. Kirill Kaprizov, if he can stay healthy and on the ice, that team's incredible. I just, when I look at the Western Conference teams, I just don't see the same in the East teams. And the Bolts are on a West Coast run themselves right now. And I I think they're going to have some trouble in this year's playoffs. Even if Kudrov comes back, you know, as a salary dump, you know, after the February trade deadline, he comes back, all of a sudden they go on a nice massive run. But as of right now, my hat's off to Colorado Avalanche, 18 game win streak. And uh, we'll see how far. Uh, not a fan of Taylor Hall. <laughs> he well, did that nice check and hit a stick right in his nose. So I believe that it was a little bit of blindsidedness, but if you're going to be dumb enough to keep your head down around a big player like Hall, you kind of had that coming. But uh, well, they he, said they were more mad that he wouldn't drop the mitts. They kept trying to fight him. They kept fucking with him for two periods, trying to get him to drop gloves. The Avalanche still won that game, but we didn't draw any stupid penalties with the fighting. It's all about the final score. If you win the game, that's that's all that mat- matters. Bruins lost in overtime, so we got the point. We still got a point, so yeah. But uh, it was still it was win number fifteen or sixteen on their win streak, so uh, they'll uh, probably keep that going. I'm gonna have to check the schedule, we'll see who they're playing, do a little analysis. I want to uh, shout out to anybody. If anybody's going to the Penguins, uh, Bruins uh, next. Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday at the Garden. I'll be, I'll probably be there. I'll drop details down below if anyone wants to meet up. They did that. They have that new uh, section underneath the Garden. I was gonna go look at, and they have, uh, it's like sausage, peppers, and stuff like that. It's like a cafeteria thing you walk into, and they serve alcohol there too before the game. It's like right at North Station too, so you don't have to go across the street anymore. You can just go and grab your shit and down, and then go upstairs. Uh, I just want to do a final. Uh, you want to do your closing thoughts first, or do you want to wait for uh, me? Well, well, you'll do your final, and I'll do our final. We'll wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we've been quiet here the last couple of weeks. Uh, I haven't really been into it mentally and everything like that. So, uh, you know, uh, I posted it on uh, our uh, Instagram and my personal page. Uh, about the Dell Let's Talk, you know, uh, be a player on the team. Somebody needs to talk, you know, just uh, give a shout to somebody, you know, just, uh, you know, somebody's always there. Somebody, uh, you know, people are always around. And uh, I just uh, coming around on one year of uh, my grand's passing kind of real hurt. And, uh, you know, we're moving through it and uh, hopefully we get back with some more uh, repetitive content for everybody. So uh, that's all I got. Yeah, we got some uh, cool stuff uh, coming in. I got a package coming in tomorrow with some goodies with a uh, surprise NHL cap that uh, is very hard to get. And then I was going to show off some uh, 
we got some rookie cards to show off, and then I have some other stuff coming kind of later this week too. So we'll do a couple uh, little video posts. If anybody in uh, Kings or anything like that has a uh, Rams Jack, Jack Youngblood, is not charging a leg for it, I'm looking to get in it. And uh, we'll keep rolling. Uh, we're excited for the Super Bowl. We'll probably do a Super Bowl squares. I'll probably do a few Super Bowl squares. And then I'll probably, we'll probably do some fun stuff about that leading up. We got some, uh, we got Joey B glasses coming. Uh, we found the, uh, gla the infamous glasses from the uh, press conference. I'm sure we're both going to be going for the Bengals. Mm -hmm. It's always special to see a team win their first championship. Mm -hmm. That's why the uh, Eagles Super Bowl loss for the Patriots wasn't like uh, heart shattering for me. Yeah, I just think uh, a lot of these fans that have like good teams right now never knew what it was like to go through 20 fucking years of eight and eight and lower. So uh, a lot, I call it a, uh, uh, Millennium Patriot fans, because <laughs> nobody, you, you guys saw a 12 and four every single year. I mean, pretty much. And that was a bad year. Yeah. Usually, won like, usually it was like 14 and two, 15 and one, 16 and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and also you can see behind me, I got a flight now for the backdrop. Hopefully that livens things up. If you guys do want to see more of Spidey Bets or something like that, a new segment thrown into the mix, do let us know in the comments below. I'm Spidey J18. He's North Shore Fitteds. And uh, this is Caps and Cards. So as always, peace, peace. love, and catch.